Well, folks, we've made it to the end of our trig course. This is our final lecture in this class, section 8.4. We're looking at De Moivre's theorem, powers, and roots of complex numbers. Specifically, we're going to figure out how to find powers of complex numbers using um, polar form and then also roots of complex numbers, um, much like the root of a quadratic equation. De Moivre's theorem says if um, R C I S theta is a complex number, and if n is any real number, then if we raise that complex number to the power of n, R C I S theta raised to the power of n um, can be found by raising the um, magnitude to the power of n, C I S n the power times theta is our new argument. So CIS theta or cosine n theta plus I sine n theta. Okay. And again, here we have it written in the compact form. So raising a complex number to a power is the same as raising the magnitude to that same power and CIS n theta. Okay. So let's do an example here. Um, find a 1 plus um, square root of 3i raised to the 8 power and express the result in rectangular form. So first we have to write um, 1 plus i or 1 plus square root of 3i in trig form. We know that r is the square root of the x um, coordinate and the y coordinate. So 1 squared plus the square root of 3 squared and all the square root of that and we get 2. The tangent of theta equals y over x, which equals the square root of 3 over 1, which is our known angle of 60 degrees. So putting this into trig form, we get 2 cosine 60 plus i sine 60, or 2 cis 60. Now we can apply um, De Moivre's theorem to this. 1 plus i square root of 3 um, um, to the 8th power is the same thing as that number in trig form, or in polar form, excuse me, 2 cosine 60 plus i sine 60 to the 8th power, which of course means we raise the magnitude to the 8th power and we multiply theta, the angle, by that power of 8, as you can see here. Doing the math, we get 256 cosine 480, i sine 480, or CIS 480 which is 256 cosine 120, or CIS 120, because 480 and 120 are coterminal. Simply subtract 360 from 480 and you get 120. This is also our reference angle of 60 in quadrant 2. And this gives us the cosine of 120 is negative 1 half. The sine of 120 is the square root of 3 over 2. Um, and so in rectangular form, we get 100, negative 128 plus 128i square roots of 3. Okay. Let's look at our second formula for this section. And this is to find the nth root, like when you're trying to find a square root, for example, or a cube root, etc. So for any positive integer n, the complex number a plus bi is an nth root of the complex number x plus yi if a plus b to the n equals x plus yi, okay? And that doesn't mean a lot, um, but here I think this will be a little bit more clear when we look at the formulas around this. If n is any positive integer, r is a real, a positive real number, and theta is in degrees, then the non-zero complex number r c i s theta has exactly n distinct nth roots given by the nth root of r cosine alpha plus i sine alpha or the nth root of r cis alpha. Now, when we're talking about n distinct nth roots, this is saying if we're looking for the square roots, then we're going to have two distinct square roots. If we're looking for the third roots, we're going to have three distinct third roots, four distinct fourth roots, five distinct fifth roots, the fifth root of, okay? So whatever this um, root we're looking for, square is two, cube is three, etc., that is what our n value is. Notice here that we've changed the angle theta 
to the angle alpha. So that's part of the challenge of determining these roots is we have to figure out what the n equals and then we have to figure out alpha. Okay. Now what this means is if we're looking for the fifth roots that we'll have to find five of them and there will actually be five different alphas. Okay, one for each root. So that's what this um, finding the alpha is all about. So notice that alpha equals um, theta, the original angle, plus 360 times k over n. And we already know it's the root. If we're looking for the fifth root, n would be five. The square root, n would be two. Now, what does k equal? k equals 0, 1, 2, up to one number less than n. So again, if n is 5, k is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If k is 2, I'm sorry, if the square root is 2, n will be 2, and k will be 0 and 1. It, k, it starts at 0 and goes up to one number less than the um, root we're looking for or the value of n. Okay, this formula for alpha is much easier to calculate if you use the second version. Alpha equals theta over n plus 360 over n times k. Okay, and we'll see that in just a second because then you just have a, um, a constant plus a constant times k. All right. And of course, if we're dealing with radians, then alpha is going to equal theta over n plus 2 pi k. Um, 2 pi over n times k instead of 360. You already should know. Okay, so let's find the two square roots of 4i and then write these in rectangular form. And so here are um, the formulas for the nth root and of course here's the formula for how to find alpha. So I wanted to give you that here on this first problem. Okay, remember that 4i can be written as 0 plus 4i. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is to um, convert this rectangular form into trig form. Okay, that should be pretty easy if you think about this graph. Where, how would you graph 4i? That's just four units up along the y-axis. So um, r is actually, the, so the magnitude is going to be 4 because it's that um, vector going right up the y-axis. And of course, the y-axis going north, if you will, is the angle 90 or pi over 2. Okay? So we get that 4i equals 4 cis pi over 2. Okay? Since we're looking for uh, square roots, notice that n is going to equal 2. The square root of r is n equals 2. Thus k is going to equal 0 and 1. Okay? So to find the alpha values, we're going to put alpha, the theta, which is pi over 2 over n, which is 2, pi over 2 over 2, plus 2 pi um, k, also over n, or 2. Okay. So we get the simplified version is pi over 4 plus pi times k. Now remember we have um, k equals 0 and 1, so we're going to have two alpha values, which we should have, because remember, we have n number of nth roots. We should have two um, square roots, okay? So for when k equals 0, we plug that into our formula here. Pi over 4 plus pi times 0 gives us pi over 4. When k equals 1, we get pi over 4 plus pi times 1, which is 5 pi over 4. All right, so now we're ready to rewrite these into the format of the, of the nth root of r, cis alpha, alpha 1 and alpha 2, and that'll give us our two roots. Well, remember, r equals 4, so the square root of 4 is 2. And then thus we have 2 cis pi over 4 and 2 cis 5 pi over 4. Now we're not done yet because remember these are in polar form and we want them in rectangular form. So we actually have to do the calculation out. 2 cosine pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4 and 2 cosine 5 pi over 4 um, and two, cos um, 2 sine 5 pi over 4. And I've done that for you here, okay? Right, we just multiply these out. So there's the first root, square root of 2 plus i square root of 2. 
And then for the second one, we get negative square root of 2 minus i square root of 2. I'm not going to walk through this. You should be able to convert between um, polar and rectangular form um, by now. Okay. So let's do one that's a little more complicated. Let's find all fourth roots of negative 8 plus 8i square root of 3. Okay. First thing we have to do is write this in trigonometric form. We've already done several of these, so you should be able to do this on your own. And um, we get 16 times uh, 16 CIS 120. You should be able to find the magnitude given these values um, of R. 16 is the value of R. And then, of course, our theta is tangent of theta equals Y over X. Okay. Um, you should be able to figure that out from the previous problems, and you should know how to do that by now. Since we're looking for fourth roots, we're looking for four of them. So n equals four, it's the fourth root. And thus k will equal zero, one, two, three. Remember k starts at zero and goes to a number one less than the number, the root we're looking for, okay? So again, using our formula for alpha, we get um, theta over n plus 360 over n times k. And thus we get 30 plus 90 k, 90 times k. Excuse me. So we're going to do this for all four values of k, 0, 1, 2, 3, and we get um, alpha 1 is 30, alpha 2 is 120, alpha 3 is 210, and alpha 4 is 300. Using these values for alpha, then we get um, the fourth root of 16, which is 2. CIS 30, 2 CIS 120, 2 CIS 210, 2 CIS 300, okay? Using those four values of alpha, 30, 120, 210, and, CI, and 300, excuse me. And remember, this new value of R is the fourth root of R because we're looking for fourth roots. So the fourth root of 16 is 2, and that's how we got the 2 up front. Okay, we need to rewrite these back into um, rectangular form. I'm not going to go through these. You can look at these. You can pause to see them, but we're simply multiplying them out. 2 times the cosine of 210, 2 times the sine of 210, etc. All right, you can use your calculator for these without a lot of problem. So there we have the 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, fourth roots of um, the original number. And if we graphed it, you would see this, that the roots are equally spaced around the circle. The circle has a radius of r, which is what we knew. And, um, and they're separated by 90 degrees, which is the, the measure between alpha. Sometimes we're given an equation. And we're trying to. Um, find all the solutions for it. So let's look at that. We have x to the fifth minus one equals zero. Graph them as vectors in a complex plane, okay? So we have to solve it and then we have to graph it. So if we solve for x, just like we do in algebra, we see that we get x to the fifth minus one equals zero, so x to the fifth equals one. There's only one real solution, which is the number one, because the, the fifth root of one is equal to one. But there are also five complex number solutions, okay? So first we need to write that, that solution, the real solution, 1, in trig form, which is 1 plus 0i. So this gives us r equals 1 and tangent theta equals 0, right? 0 over 1, y over x, and so theta also equals 0 degrees. So we get... Um, 1 equals 1 cosine i sine theta, I'm sorry, 0. So um, 1 is equivalent to 1 CIS 0 degrees. All right. Since we're looking for the fifth root, um, the, the fifth root of r is going to be 1. The fifth root of 1 is 1. And the alpha, we're going to have um, four K, five Ks, right? Zero, one, two, three, four. And N is going to equal to five. So we know it's zero over 
theta over n plus 360 times k over n, or what we get here is 0 plus 72k, or simply 72k, okay, since our initial angle is 0, okay? And if you think about the graph, I didn't say this in the last slide, and I should have, since our real solution was x equals 1, notice we're along the x-axis um, to the value of 1. So r would equal 1. And of course, the angle is 0, because if we're on the x-axis, that angle is 0 or 360. But we would use the 0, not the 360. So we let k equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, because n equals 5. So we start at 0 and go up to 1 less. And then we find the four alphas. 0 times 72, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and we get our four angles there. Okay, excuse me, our five angles there. 0, 72, 144, 216, and 288. These are our four alpha, excuse me, our five alpha values. Of course, we're looking for five of them because we're looking for the fifth root, and that's what n is. And we should have five possible roots. Okay, so we get, um, remember, we're multiplying r is 1. The fifth root of 1 is 1, so we get 1 CIS, or just CIS 0, CIS 72, CIS 144, CIS 216, and CIS 288. So here we can see the graph um, has five different roots. You can see the vectors here. They're all at um, 72 degrees apart, so they go 72, 144, 216, and 288 and then of course zero, um, and it, so you can see them here around the graph, all right? Around a unit circle whose radius is one. So this ends our course. Um, this is the last material for this course. I hope you've enjoyed the course. I hope you found the lectures helpful um, and clarifying of the material. I would really value any opinions you have about the course, any aspect of the course, um, anything that worked really well. Um, please let me know anything that you didn't work well that was challenging for you. If you, um, I have found the best feedback comes from students. And finally, um, anything that um, you think might be missing from the course that you think would have been helpful to you and thus would be helpful to future students. Um, good luck on the final exam and reach out if you need any help between now and then.